It's now time to uh, fire up my steam engine, get it into steam, and give Isabel a run around the basement test track. So let's do that. So I have all the usual paraphernalia for getting a steam engine going. Put her up on wooden blocks. I've got my radio controller here. Water supply and a pump bottle. Uh, cylinder oil. Uh, the synthetic sort because this has got a superheater after the lubricator synthetic gear oil um, gear oil thick gear oil for um, lubricating all the various moving parts in the chassis a syringe for just emptying a little bit out of the top of the boiler to give a bit of steam space i'll show you that in a minute and um, the propane butane mixed gas from a camping store. So first off I'm going to fill the engine with gas and I do that by putting the gas nozzle, I've got an extension nozzle on this can, special extension nozzle on the can here that you can buy. It goes onto the uh, Ronson and I fill it up. I fill it up until I get the uh, liquid gas bubbling up and over the top of the uh, the seal here. And there it is, it's full. Now the reason I fill up with gas as the first thing is because you can get gas uh, laying around on the uh, workbench top after you've filled it up. And that can ignite, if you ignite the uh, gas immediately after filling up, it can ignite the stuff across the bench. Propane, butane is heavier than air and settles. So I give it time to disperse. So now I'm just going to fill up the cylinder lubricator. Stood in the door over here. Take the top off it. Now I have previously drained it through the drain plug here. So all I need to do is add oil. I have uh, shown you before that I drain the, um, the water out the bottom of it at the end of a run because the oil is hot and it uh, flows out much more quickly at the bottom. So I just add a little bit of oil here. Let that settle. Sometimes I poke it. But you can see the you can see the bubbles coming up there. Sorry I kicked the tripod. But you can see the bubbles coming up there. Another little bubble came through. Make sure you've got enough in there. Fill it up to just above the pipe that cuts across the top of the lubricator. Okay. Now, I'm going to lubricate while it's still lighter. Not put any water in the boiler yet. So I'm going to lubricate it first with my mixture of gear oil and uh, rapeseed oil. And as I've shown you before on my other engines, I have every little joint gets a touch. Oh, oop, that was a little bit too much on both sides. And then of course, particularly the um, axle boxes, the ends of the axles here, need a lot of lubrication. Make sure those bearings get, get oil on them. The little end bearings here. They take a lot of pressure. Okay, that's pretty well lubed. Little ends, big ends, connecting rods, centric cranks, etc, etc. So, the next bit is to fill it with water. Let's do that. There's no water fill system on this engine other than putting water in the boiler through the safety valve. So I do that. As I explained in an earlier part of this video, that the, um, the gas tank runs out before the boiler runs out of water. So there's no need to have a water fill system on it, which makes the engine very much more simple to produce, to make, also to run. But maybe not as much fun. So I'm using my squeegee bottle. Well, I've shown you many times before. I'm going to use that to 
fill it with, wa fill it with water. You don't have to use one of these bottles. I could just use a, um, I could just use a little funnel and just pour the water in. This makes it a little bit easier because it lets the air out. It doesn't overfill and bubble up and splurge off down the sides. It goes directly into the boiler. There it is, full water. Now what I need to do is to take a little bit of water out to give a bit of steam space. I'll take between 20 and 30 millilitres to uh, give that space. Or should I say cc's to give that space. Put the safety valve back on. And remember to just nip it up, not very tight. It's got a fiber washer underneath it, but just nip it up enough. There you go. Don't strain anything. So now we're ready to set fire to the engine. Now for the most exciting bit, which is lighting the burner. Usually on these roundhouse engines, they're quite easy to light. I've already undone the cab roof so I can get at the burner control here. Let's just ease it forward a bit. So I hear them. There we go. And it goes back with a hell of a pop. Don't be frightened of the pop, it's a good thing. Oops. We'll leave it for a few minutes to heat up the water. You can begin to hear the um, bubbling and hissing of the steam engine. Uh, we seem to be getting some pressure up here, so let's turn the RC on. It's the radio control. Turn it on here. And forward gear. Open the throttle. Nothing. A little bit of a twitch. Reverse. Got the condensates in the cylinder. A little bit reluctant to start. We'll clear in a moment. There she goes. Now as... There she goes. Forward gear. Now as she heats up, I can turn down the burner so it's not making the roaring that so many burners do make. Just turn it down a little bit. Not too much that it goes out but enough to um, quieten it. Now that's, in a little while that'll be making enough heat to pull a train. She's still coming up to pressure. There's a bit of steam coming out of the chimney there. A little bit of a knock at the back bearing there. That's just because the wheel's doing this a little bit. Now, this engine won't link up because it doesn't have a combination, it doesn't have the combination lever here, so it just stops. Runs very smoothly, this engine. Makes a little bit of a whistle sound because of the um, chuffer pipe, if it's not putting a lot of steam through. That's the point. There goes the steam whistle. That's the steam whistle. Still a bit um, dribbly because of the it's heating up still. And the steam condenses. It's always a good idea before you actually get out onto the track to um, not only turn it down a little bit, which I'm going to do, but also check that the safety valve is working with a pair of pliers make sure it's not stuck down it's blowing off properly so I'll always do that when you run a locomotive just check that center piece on the this center um, spindle on the safety valve make sure that it's not stuck because sometimes it can happen especially if the loco has not been used for a while just to ease it that little bit don't burn yourself in the process get the gloves on so I don't burn myself 
And here we go. Get it onto the basement track and couple it up to the goods train. And let's enjoy the run. Okay. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe.